Good evening and welcome to the live edition of Work and Money. I'm your host, James Crosby, and publisher of City News Newspaper. Work and Money is designed to inform and educate people on personal finance, career development, and entrepreneurship. It's Tuesday night and we're live. The number today is 575-0403 if you'd like to join them on the conversation. Today we have um, an entrepreneur, a local entrepreneur, um, singer, songwriter, producer, Gavin White. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Give me all credit for all that. <laughs> this is actually interesting because usually when I hear um, somebody's a local singer, songwriter, writer, producer, I, I'm always thinking, oh, okay, here we go again. You know, everybody wants to be a star. But I actually had a chance to um, listen to your stuff. I've had a good conversation with you. And um, this, your story is, is um, actually pretty phenomenal. And, and I think, you know, it'd be a good opportunity to tell some of our listeners, our, our viewers, and our, and our readers of the newspaper, you know, what it's like to be an entrepreneur and, and what it's taken to kind of get to the point of actually um, getting a CD Pressed and and um, you also pr did um, album you know a while a while ago so um, again thank you for being on the show thank you thank you well um, boy those were a lot of questions but um, actually you know I, I understand I, I read in a book once that an entrepreneur was, was someone who took an idea and and went with it and took it all away you know and so the, the music thing is just something that was in me just a gift that God has given me you know and I've always been doing that all my life and uh, I've tried some other things I've, I've, I've had a level of success with some other things but you know I just found myself always going back to the music uh, I tried it before back uh, a few years ago uh, I released a single and um, the great thing about my experience was that it was a time in my life when I didn't have anyone to tell me that I couldn't you know right. um, so often we we have a dream and we run and we tell somebody about it that's a great dream crusher you know yeah, yeah. and you just walk away without your dream you leave your dream and everybody steps on it and and you go away and it was uh, a while back you know I, I i realized that i had a gift for songwriting and i could kind of hold a tune and um my idea was that i could just like walk into the music store and buy what it took to put together the music, do it, and I would have a record. Well, I wasn't far off, you know, I wasn't far off because that's what I did. You know, I just, I put it together, I believed, there was no one there to tell me that I couldn't do it, so I went for it. And well, you know, um, let, let's kind of like set the framework, because right now you, you've you got um, two two CDs released, yeah. um, and that's under the, the banner of Urban um, Christian Gospel. Is that, am I saying it right? Well, it's a, a urban, a contemporary gospel music. Contemporary, contemporary gospel, gospel music, music. Yes. Contemporary. yes. But you didn't start off as, as gospel. You started off actually in the, uh, doing R&B. Interestingly enough, that's, that's true. You know, but if you listen to my, uh, my first record, which was, you know, uh, about a decade ago, um, it, it had that... It had that feel. It had that gospel feel. You know, I've always loved the Lord, and I've always, He's always been in me, you know, and even when I was trying to do that, it, that came out, even then, you know, and I, a friend of mine, uh, Darlene, who's always, you know, we've always been very close. She, I remember her mentioning that that was the reason that that song did so well. You know, it was just me. It was just what was in me. It just came out that way, and now now I'm a, I'm a little older, I'm a little bit more in touch with my spirituality, that's my focus, that's my goal, that's my mission in life, and so my music is, is, is a contemporary Christian music. That's good. Now yeah. again, let's going back to, to when you get got started, um, there always is people who are going to step on your dreams, and there's uh -huh. always, um, um, when you look up and see the mountain, it's, it's, it's bigger than what you think it really is. And, mm -hmm. um, but you actually, you were in your 20s when you, when you, got your, when you pressed your first um, wax. Yeah, right? it was wax back then. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So tell, tell me how that came about. Well, you know, I, I, was, I was listening to what was out on the radio and what I used to do jokingly for fun at home, you know, like on the piano pecking away and writing songs and notice people, I would write a song, right? you know, uh, maybe a silly song about something that was going on. Maybe I'd be teasing a friend. And they would call me up and they'd say, you know what, that stupid song that you were singing the other day that you made up, I'm still singing it today, uh -huh. you know. <laughs> and and, I, and I, I, I looked at that and I said, wow, maybe, maybe I should be doing that. And it was actually the first song that I ever recorded 
and I, I kind of went down to a radio station, kind of green, and said, what, you know, what do you think of this? And back then it was Tolliver, remember? Uh, he said, uh, wow, this is great. You know, who, who did that? Who sang that? You know, who, who wrote that? You know, who played that? You know, and, and we had something, you know, and I, I was, I remember going out to L.A., right? Well, how, why, why did you go to L.A.? Well, because you, you know how it is. You think that, you, you know, it's all out there, right? Right. And I figured, you know, you, you go out there and with this demo tape, right, and you go sit across the big table, right, and somebody listens to it and they go, yeah, 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 you're going to be a millionaire. You don't even have to go back home, you know? Right. And so I thought that would happen. <laughs> it didn't happen, you know? Uh, but it was a great experience, you know but, what I mean? But, but um, uh, before that, though, you were telling me earlier that um, Lynn Tolliver had given you some, some contacts out in, yeah, in L.A. Yeah, he gave me some contacts, some friends of his in the business uh, from, you know, New York, L.A., and I got my own out of some book you buy in the bookstore, and it, it, was, it was interesting. I actually called those folks up and I actually uh, worded uh, my little speech in such a way that they received me. I went out there and, and I got in, and um, it was interesting. I, I had my mind set on being something that I don't think God had for me, you know, yeah. and uh, but even back then, people would say, hey, you're a great songwriter. Hey, why don't you be a staff songwriter here at this record company? And I, and I took that as an insult. How silly. <laughs> How silly, you know? So that, that was... Kind of, I mean, were the, were, when you were getting those offers, were they um, um, well-known companies? Or oh, yeah. I won't mention... Like, you know, yeah, no, mention no, 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 like, like uh, Virgin Records. Okay. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's fantastic. Now, you were, you were out in L.A., and... You didn't take the job offer. <laughs> no. So, uh, yeah. so then what, le what made you leave um, the L.A.? Well, I mean, I just went out there for the purpose, you know, a young guy, business trip. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to be a millionaire when I come back. I'm going to take my stuff and pack up and go. That, that's what I thought, you know. Okay. And so I just, just came back home because this is home, you know, and, and we, had a, we had a plan B. You know, remember that, Plan B. We, right. had, we did have a Plan B, and the Plan B was if you didn't get this big, giant record deal, you just go ahead and press your record yourself. And he said, and I'll play it. That's right. right. So we're going to have to take a two-minute commercial break, but when we come back, I want, to, I want you to tell us what it took to press your own record. Okay. Great. We'll be right back. Are you doing all right? Northeast Ohio's leader in multimedia presentation, equipment, sales, and service is NPI, Northeast Projections Incorporated. NPI is your choice for renting projection equipment for any size audience or designing a multimedia conference center for your company or organization. If you're still presenting your material on VHS, let NPI transfer to DVD or CD-ROM for a professional look that will make your next event a memorable one. For sales, rentals, corporate, and social event planning or video multimedia productions, contact NPI. Crosby Furniture has all the best comforts for your home. Quality furniture with all the brand names. Hey, let's take a look. You'll be impressed with our showroom, a fine dining room, bedroom, and living room furniture with just the right price for you. With over 40 years of service in the community, we are still here. Come in and see my husband and I, where you'll always be treated like family. Bring your monthly adult cable bill and receive 10% off your next purchase. Keeping you informed in the African-American community. It's your city news. News of the city. I enjoy city news for the work and money section. I like the pulse section. It keeps me up on the entertainment happenings around town. As a local hip-hop entrepreneur in the city of Cleveland, the combination of swerve and work and money has done tremendously for my company. Free at 1,500 locations throughout Northeast Ohio. Pick up your city news today. I enjoy city news, and you should too. This is without a doubt the best show in Adelphia and probably the best show in Cleveland. What do you guys think of that? I think it's great, but um, isn't it called a voice for kids and you're like yeah, taking over? Yeah, voice for kids, what to do you? Um, you're like taking over a set, you know. Oh, well then I'll keep quiet for a minute. Okay, you guys go. It is a voice for kids, so I could talk for all the kids. That's how I can't make it here. Um, I like coming here. We're 
back and we're live. It's Tuesday night. The number is 575-0403. We're talking to singer, songwriter, producer, Mr. Gavin White. Again, thank you for being on the show. Looking like Russell Simmons oh, today. Man. Man, you know, if I get paid for every time someone said that, I'd, I'd be all right. If you had just a yeah. portion, of 20% of his money, you'd be oh, yeah. doing well. Oh, yeah. um, you know, and, and the other thing, you know, so I guess it's like, um, t I want to get out the information. You know, you're an entrepreneur. You, you, you've um, had your knocks. You, you've um, achieved some level of success, and um, you've done a lot of different things. You know, one of the things we want to talk about is you, you do network marketing. Mm -hmm. um, I know you're involved with prepaid legal services yeah, and some yeah, other things yeah. you've done in the past. And, you know, in, in my eyes as an entrepreneur, you've got to do a lot of different things, and not everything works, but you kind of keep putting them together until you, something actually sticks. Yeah, you know, it's interesting uh, because I, I, I said something to you. I admire you for the way you manage your time the, the, because... I've never been that good of a, a time manager, you know, you know how to keep moving. And, but um, I think it's good for, for most people to focus. You know, I used to be all over the place, right. all over the place. And, uh, you know, jack of all trades and master of none, yeah. you know. And, um, you know, I, I, I've, I've learned that I, I'm not that great at multitasking like you are. So I, I focus, I find my niche. And I and I stay there. Uh, yeah. And um, being able to um, keep your eye on the on the on the prize on the end game is is, is usually critical. Let's right. take a caller. Um, go ahead, Kevin. Are you there? You there, Kevin? Yes. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Did you have a question? Oh no, I, I didn't really have a question. I was watching the television and I noticed my buddy from long, long past on there. Uh -oh. I'm like Kevin. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What's the guy been doing on there? <laughs> well, hey, how you doing? You probably remember me from Cleveland Heights, Travis, Dirt, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, all our buddies back then. Yeah, you know, and I I, I, I found a picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> we were on the beach, yeah. yeah. Uh -uh. I wish I had it with me. <laughs> uh, that's all right. <laughs> Say, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you're doing your thing. I know you was going to do it because I remember back in the day when you had the music, the videos. I remember your song. So I knew you was going to do pretty good. And like I say, I'm happy to see you right here. God bless you, brother. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for the call. Thank you. Okay. You, you know, and that's funny, too, because um, a lot of times people can see in a person when they start playing, replaying, you know, years ago, you know, I knew that person was going to be a, a songwriter. I knew that person was going to be successful. I knew that person was going to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Because you, when you start looking back, the character traits that that person has carries forth with them throughout their life. And it's so interesting, you know, when people see good in you, roll with it. You yeah. know, because so often someone will give you a compliment, they'll say, you ought to be this, you ought to be that. And a lot of times they're right. But if your self-esteem doesn't quite meet up to what they see, you, you won't go forward, you know, or you take too long. Th that's you know? exactly right. Now, now we're in the age of, um, I guess we're even almost beyond the uh, CDs. We're on, what is it, um, iPods or something like that where yeah. you get your stuff electronically. Yeah. But even before iPods and CDs, there was wax, and I still have all my wax. Okay. But you actually pressed um, an album. You made an album. So yeah. tell me how that whole process came about because that was pretty unique in itself. Well, you know, there are different people that do different things, and I've learned to, to accept that, you know. And I think you keep referring back to the first time I ever had a record out and basically you know I just went to the people that did what they did you know I, I went to the studio that recorded what I would do you know and they were the engineers and and I was just I would just play the, play the different pieces and we put it all together back then in the beginning on tape I still have my first record on tape it was I'm not gonna tell how old I am by uh, <laughs> talking about what type of tape it was but it was on tape you know? exactly. That's funny. yeah and then you send it away to somebody and they, I remember I got my first box of records it was it was amazing so how, how were you able to do that though because that seems um, I wouldn't know how to do that I've always known how to pray okay. so <laughs> you know what I mean and he'll kind of direct you direct okay. you where you need to go you know so I ended up finding out who press records you know um, and just put all the pieces together and you know I was doing things that people said you couldn't really do you know, and um, I was able to, well, we're going back to the first record, you know, I was, I was able to go out there and put it in the stores, and I remember I found out that the radio station would call these certain stores, right, to see which records were moving, and so it was my plan back then to go in there and send people to buy records, right, 
But what would happen is they were already gone. That's they good. were already gone. Yeah, that, that was awesome. So you you were gonna um, have people buy the records for for what reason though? Well, because for, for what they call tracking, you know, okay. because the the station would keep track of what was actually selling. What people were buying would be what people enjoyed listening to, which would in turn be what they would continue to play. And so, and, um, so you made it on the charts in, uh, on WZAK. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, and it, it was kind of it was amazing. You know, it was amazing. It's like I would ask my friends, please call the radio station, and request my record, right? And that l later on today, did you call? Did you call? Did you call? Uh, no, man, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> no, Gavin, oh, I got real tied up. I didn't do it. But yet, you would really hear people calling in. So and that wasn't a, a necessity, you know? That, that's and really that was a, such a blessing that people really did take to it. And what was so important about that was it gave me this confidence that I could do it. And so later on in life, when I was called to do something a little different, I knew I could do it. Right. With his help, right? You know. So now you're you're um, actually on the charts, and I don't know if that's the right terminology on uh, XM satellite radio. You you're on the charts again. This is, uh, which is another venue altogether. I mean, radio is is pretty much as far wide as the, the signal goes, but satellite is is across the country or across the world, actually. Yeah. So yeah. how does that work? Well, um, y you know, technology is changing. The way people listen to radio is changing. The way people, you know, the internet is big and everything. And um, you've been hearing a lot about XM radio. You've been hearing a lot about satellite radio. Like people have these new radios where they can pick what they want to hear. And so, so uh, I just personally, it, it was no big super story to what happened. But I was just sitting online one day and something came across me about XM radio. And I said, XM radio. So I looked it up and and it was it was like going back to the other day, the olden days where I was didn't know, right. you know, and because I didn't know, I would learn and I would learn the right way. You know? <laughs> so I contacted the the, the uh, program director of the Spirit, which is the uh, gospel uh, Christian radio station on XM Radio. You know, how can I get you to, you know, listen to you know me and you know possibly put me on, you know? And, you know, he sends me this email and says, well, you send it to me and the address. And so I boxed it up, sent it off to him, you know? And uh, it wasn't no special business language I knew that no one else knew. He heard it. I guess God opened up his ears so that he could hear it. He heard it. And I, t I tell you the truth, I don't think he got past the first song because the first song on the CD um, was the song that he added. And I started to get an email weekly of, where the song was. Uh, the first week I got one that said it was added, and then the next week I got one and I wasn't on it, you know. So I, I sent him an email and I thanked him for giving me a chance, you know. Hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you playing me, you know. I, better luck next time, you know. And uh, um, the next, and then he sent me an email back and says, you know, it's just, you know, those are the top 30 that you see, you know. Oh, okay. You're just not on the top 30, you know. And so, I kind of grinned, okay, and I waited, and, and then I, and the next thing I noticed, I was number 22, 21, 20, 19, and it just kept on and kept, I don't even look anymore. You know, last I checked, it was number three, and. Wow, uh, yeah, number three, mm -hmm, unbelievable. Mm -hmm, yeah. Now, how, how can you convert that to, to dollars, or, or is there a way to, because it's just being played. Do you get paid every time I mean, it plays? Yeah, or? well, certainly you receive a royalty income for, through publishing. You know, because, you know, when radio plays you, they report what they play, and that goes to, that information goes to ASCAP or BMI, whoever whoever handles your publishing, and you'll eventually, I haven't really checked that. You know, I, you know it's interesting. Uh, my focus has not been necessarily to get rich, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I haven't really sat up and dreamed of a Bentley and, and all those things. I just, I just enjoying I feel comfortable and happy doing what God made me to do. That's you know? fantastic. And if that comes, that's great. You know, certainly I owe a few people a few dollars, <laughs> you know, along the way. That's right. Yeah. And, and I'd like and, to be comfortable. And, and, and yours will come soon. We're going to take mm -hmm. a two-minute commercial break. We'll be right back.
Ohio Mortgage is an honest mortgage company with hundreds of lenders bidding for your business. At TransOhio, everyone is treated with respect and we love to say yes. I just got divorced. Can you help? I'd like to purchase my first home. Can you help? We would like to invest in our children's future by buying rental property. Can you help? So call TransOhio to get your yes. Bring in your monthly Adelphia cable bill and receive a free mortgage analysis. We love to say yes. Hello, I'm Ed Ostry, host of Polka Polka Polka. Tune in to see Bobby Kravis and the boys in the band. Joey Tomsick and the JTO. The Bobby Zolka Band. And the Frank Morapchik Orchestra. Adelphia and WELW 1330 Radio, in association with Phil Cernick Productions, brings you Polka Polka Polka. Step off the beaten path and explore the pure natural beauty of our parks in Northeastern Ohio. Hi, I'm Ken Gober. Join me outdoors. Catch Outdoors, only on Adelphia Channel 15. How can, how can you, like say, for an example, you had a child, mm -hmm. and you didn't example. have any discipline. <laughs> okay. Example, okay. example, really now, big example. Now, hypothetically. How would you be able to teach your child any discipline when you wasn't taught discipline yourself? There are cases where, you know, teens, they get mm -hmm. caught up in Gangs. a gang, like they <laughs> witness something. Some bad stuff happens to good people sometimes. And like, it's sad, but you know, that stuff that's happens to, to <laughs> bad people too. So it's like bad, bad stuff all around. I don't know. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to City News Newspaper. Become one of 210,000 weekly readers of our publication, City News Newspaper, available everywhere. We're back and we're live. My guest today is Mr. Gavin White, singer, songwriter, producer, slash entrepreneur. Because I do want to at some point talk about your um, your successes, trials and tribulations of your network marketing things that you've done. Okay. But again, thank you for being on the show. We're going to go to the phones and take Kevin or no Wayne. Wayne. Are you there, Wayne? Yes. Hi. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. My quick question was, I, I'm also a fellow songwriter myself. And my question to Gavin was, how do you get into the business as far as songwriting is concerned, especially in this area of Cleveland, Ohio, which is not a New York, which is not an L.A. When I heard you had offers, you know, to be on different staff, you know, Virgin Records and all of that. But it's hard being a songwriter here. Now, I do also do gospel rap, and I can send out demos to, like, get people to listen to my music. But I would prefer to get into business to be strictly a songwriter. What is your advice or suggestions on how to get into the business to strictly do songwriting? Hmm, my advice. Well, it's almost difficult for me to really give that advice because I can't really take a lot of credit for what I've done. I really believe that, you know, the, the Lord has ordered my steps, that, that I, I, I have a faith that what he has me doing, he will also facilitate that it gets done. And a lot of things that have happened, I've, I've been able to look back on and go, wow, I couldn't have thought that up if I tried, you know, but it happened. But for you, my brother, I think that you should continue to write. Um, prayerfully, you know, you, you have the ability to uh, put your songs in such a form where you can demo them, where someone can hear them. Um, there are a lot of artists that need material because a lot of people are not blessed with the ability to write as well as the ability to sing and and put the whole package together um, so you need to to be around those people and you're right this is not New York um, this is not LA but that is certainly you know that we've had artists that have come out of this city that have been very successful um, you might want to you know just give a call back after the show because I you know th there are things that are beginning to come to me that I just don't want to you know take up that much time with but you're welcome to call back and I'll give you some information that I think might be helpful without uh, taking up too much of the, the time on the show how's that 
Sound good, brother. And I also got a couple of prepaid legal questions for you, too, so I will call back. <laughs> All right. All right, my brother. I'll be waiting for you to call. All right. Okay. All righty. All right. God bless you. God bless you, too. Thank you for the call. You know, and, and um, I guess to follow up on this question, it, it, it appears in my eyes that the um, internet and the satellite system makes it a, has changed the industry for people that you don't have to be huge, you don't have to be a big name to get in front of a lot of people. And let's, I want you to talk about that. You, you know what? That's that's very interesting. I took a class many years ago about the song about the music of business, and and a few things really stuck. Um, personally, I don't look at it the way everyone looks at it. I, I I don't. My goal is not to be this big old star. I mean, I saw Usher in. Tower City the other day, my goodness, I would want peace, you know. Uh, m my goals are a little bit different, but you know, when you, when you look at it, when you look at the cost involved in producing music, and if you kept your goals realistic, you could survive in the business of music, you know, especially with the technology that's available today. Um, I have a website, uh, which they keep showing on the screen, at contemporarychristianman.com. Um, People come there and they get a chance to know me and they get a chance to sample the music. And if they like, um, you know, they can click on that buy button. You know, uh, they don't have to go anywhere. Um, I have a, a, a presence on MySpace, uh, a music presence there, and people have an opportunity to come there and they can hear the music and they go, wow, you know, I like this. And then they can click and then they can do that. And so uh, it is possible that an artist can can really make a living with the gifts that God has given them. And, and that's 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 really important to, to say, you know, um, right now everybody knows the music industry is in a, in the in the pits right now because mm -hmm. everybody's going online, they're sh swapping, um, they're downloading, illegally downloading and swapping swapping songs and nobody's getting paid for them. But I think in today's age, the average person trying to cut music can get in front of a lot of people and they don't have to worry about going into the local stores, coconuts or something like that. Right, or right. Out there, um, wow. To get your, to get your, um, they're not out there anymore, are they? <laughs> but you can do it yourself, like you said, with your own buy button on your own website that costs you maybe about, um, you know, 20 bucks a month to, to have it um, serviced. Let's, quickly, we got um, a minute left. Let's talk oh. about um, your, your, um, your uh, prepaid legal services. Okay, okay. Well, I, I was very blessed in that area. I, again, I don't want to take credit for that, but a friend of me came to me back uh, hmm, quite some time ago and told, asked me if I wanted a business opportunity. I looked at it. It made sense. It made sense for everyone involved. You know, things are changing. You know, we're in a litigious society, and the only people that can really afford access to the legal system are people who have a lot of money and how many people have a lot of money not many okay 30 seconds now tell me seconds. tell is there is there money to be made in what's called the uh, multi-level marketing or the network marketing absolutely phase and phenomena? Ab absolutely just find something that fits okay it was easy with prepaid legal I've been involved with them many years and they have a track record they've been in business many years okay all you had to do how was come a lot of people end up getting out of these after they get in they get end up getting out of them uh, there's all the names out there those are personal choices. Those are uh, people that give up and never give up, never give up. You know, everything in life is not going to be easy. It's not going to be just given to you. And those are simply people that don't follow the plan. That's good. Now, um, in 15 seconds, what are the names of your two um, CD CDs that are out there now? The first one is called Fear No Evil. And the second one is the new CD that's out now called Contemporary Christian Man. And they can be found on your website. They can be found on my website. They can be found at Rainbow. They can be found online, bestbuys.com. And, they and can the name of your website again? ContemporaryChristianMan.com. Very good. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I hope you got something out of the show also. This is James Krause, publisher of City News Newspaper. You've been watching Work and Money. We will return again live next week with replays throughout the week on Adelphia Channel 15. See you.